We do not yet have an MOU, um, which is not such a bad thing because ANU signs very few MOUs. And what we make sure is once we sign them, we make sure that there is a lot of activity and there is no uncertainty yeah. around that. So, so I'm glad we have an opportunity. We've met with three faculties of IPB today. Um, there are very promising areas of collaboration that have been identified. Um, and, and it would be great you know, that, we, that we sign an MOU knowing exactly the areas that we, where we're going to collaborate on um, and what opportunities that will provide to students of IPB, but also to staff uh, of IPB. So uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Today, um, I will be talking to you a little bit about the university, about the ANU, um, but then mainly about a program that we run, which is called the Future Research Talent Program. Can you see? Okay. Um, well, please see the move a little bit. Um, if, if you cannot see. So, um, so as, as introduced, I look after international relations and partnerships for the Australian National University in the areas of sciences, health, and medicine. That's my role. Um, and really, this is working. So some of you may know about the Australian National University. Um, you may have seen it in the rankings in QMS. Um, if you don't know, I will be telling you very briefly about who we are and you know um, where we are located and what, what we do. So um, if you believe in rankings, we are ranked very highly, um, and that is mainly to do with, with the research output that the university provides. So Australian National University is a, is a research-based university. So we, we were set up as a, as a research institute. When we, when we started, we were only offering PhD degree programs. We did not do any master's degrees or undergraduate programs. That came later on. So we were purely set up as a research institute um, and we were set up after the Second World War as Australia was coming out in the Second World War and as a nation building exercise. So we're the only national university in Australia. There's only one. Um, and and we, we were set up to, to focus on research in natural sciences and life sciences, but also in Asia Pacific. So we've always had a very strong um, you know, uh, interest and a focus on understanding our immediate neighbors, uh, you know, in the Asia Pacific, Indonesia being a key, key neighbor for us. Um, and, and we've had a college of Asia Pacific right at the beginning. Um, again, given our research focus, um, we have produced the highest number of Nobel Prize winners out of, out of any Australian university. So six so far have come out of the ANU um, and our graduates, you know, even though they get a research-led education, they are still considered one of the most employable coming out of Australia. Um, here are the six Nobel Prize winners that have come from the ANU. Um, and really that's Professor Brian Smith. He is the current Vice Chancellor or Rector of, of the ANU, yes. Um, and he won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2011. So, um, he has maintained that vision and that focus of being on research, um, and that's what we that's what we continue to focus on. Um, 
but there have been a few Nobel Prize winners before him as well, um, mainly in the area of medical research um, and, and, and in economics. I don't know if it's working. Yes, I think you need to run the slides for me, please. Um, so again, just a bit about the research focus. Um, the academic staff that you find at ANU are deeply embedded in research work, um, and they're the ones who will teach you as well. Research that is produced out of ANU is ranked very highly, not just according to Australian standards, but according to world standards um, as well. And, and, and that is possible because we have state-of-the-art uh, research facility that infrastructure on campus. And um, you know, we, we are quite privileged in that, that we've managed to build that research infrastructure, uh, thanks to the investment made by the Australian government into, into it. Uh, next slide, please. Here are some of the facilities that, that exist at the ANU in the areas of scientific research. So given I'm from the sciences, I will focus on scientific research. Um, and so you have, you know, most of, we only have one campus in Canberra, but we have research stations and sites located across Australia and some even internet. So AITC, for example, um, you know, that's the Advanced Instrumentation Technology Center. Um, that's where we develop satellites that Australia produces and launches, and that's where we test them. Um, so again, state-of-the-art infrastructure, research infrastructure um, exists, and that is accessible to both staff and also to research students. So, so when even undergraduate students, when they come to their honors year, when they have to do those, their, your thesis, you're able to then have access to some of that research infrastructure, get trained on that, and then have access to that. Um, next slide, please. Uh, that's again some more of our research infrastructure. We do have a supercomputer on campus. Um, for those of you who are doing a lot of computational analysis, that is the fastest supercomputer that Australia has. Again, that is on ANU campus. It's, it's a shared resource across Australia, but ANU staff do get access to it. Next slide, please. Uh, of course, we cannot do all the research on our own. Um, research, scientific research, especially today, is highly collaborative. Uh, you know, I was reading a statistic yesterday. I think it's more than a quarter of all scientific journal, uh, research papers published have an international core um, now, at least those that are coming out of Australia. Uh, you know, so uh, we are highly international. We partner with high quality institutions around the world. Um, and um, some of them you can see listed here. Uh, again, mainly research for Ross University, and we're hoping to develop a research partnership uh, with IPB. Next slide, please. Um, so again, colleges, the ones I have highlighted here are those that participate in the FRT program, the Future Research Challenge program. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep the focus on the sciences, health and medicine and computer science. Um, but we are a very, you know, diverse and, and broad university. We cover uh, research and educational activity in a broad range of disciplines. Next slide, please. Um, in the sciences, um, we have a number of research schools and also interdisciplinary centers and institutes. And the growth in these interdisciplinary centers and institutes has been phenomenal. So a number of them have been created over the past, you know, five or six years. Um, and that really kind of goes to show that the challenges that the world faces in this day and age, they cannot be solved by just one area of science. We need to get different scientists from different backgrounds coming and working together to solve challenges like climate change, you know, like uh, solution to, to um, you know, natural disasters, to, to water problems, which are not just Australia's problem, but also many other countries. So, um, the Future Research Talent Program has research projects which are on offer to you as students by all of these areas. Um, so you'll be able to work with staff from various uh, you know, range of discipline areas. Next slide, please. Um, and that's, we have, we have three um, schools in the health and medicine uh, area. The most prominent of them is the John Curtin School of Medical Research. Um, that school in itself has produced four Nobel Prize winners um, so far. So they are they are very you know research active and then prominent in their research and very international. Next slide, please. Uh, again, just disciplinary rankings. If you, you know, in as a university is ranked very highly, but in specific disciplines that we do research in and we teach, we are also ranked very highly. 
um, you know, top 50 and 100 in the world in pretty much all of the sciences um, that, that might be operating. Um, and in many cases, we are the top in Australia. Next slide, please. So FRT Indonesia, I mean, you know, why do we have this program? How did it come about? Um, it's, it's basically to, to address, um, you know, a, a need that ANU had to better engage with Indonesia, especially in scientific research. So our College of Asia and Pacific, they've had a lot of engagement with Indonesia so far. Um, at one stage, we had seven ministers in the Indonesian cabinet that were graduates of ANU. Um, you know, so, but they're all social scientists, they're all policy makers, they are economists, and that's where ANU and Indonesia has had a strong relationship. Um, in the sciences, not so much, so we wanted to change that um, and, and really play a role in developing the next generation of scientists that are coming out. Of and that's what led to the FRT program. Bogor Mayor is alumni, I think, Bogor Mayor. The mayor uh, of the city is uh, is an uh, ANU alumni, yes, yes. yes. Um, and I think currently I'm not sure if Dr. Mari Pagesu is in the cabinet. Yes, yes. yes. Mari Pagesu is an ANU alumni. There's there's many. Um, as Tariq Pagdes is uh, the current Indonesian ambassador to Australia in Canberra, Dr. Siso Pramono, and his wife, Dr. Masia Gusirata, again both ANU graduates. So ANU and Indonesia have had a long history of uh, you know collaboration and education. Um, it's just mostly it has been in the social sciences. Um, so hopefully the FRD program will, will bring that to the sciences as well. It will bring scholars from Indonesia to ANU. Um, next slide, please. I just want to make a quick mention to Professor Chenapati Jagadish uh, and his wife, Vidya Jagadish. They're the two people that you see sitting there. Um, he's a distinguished professor of physics at the ANU. And his idea is actually the genesis behind how the FRT scheme works and how it functions. Um, Professor Jogadish is also the current president of the Australian Academy of Science. So he yeah, has taken that role, taken up that role this year for the next five years. He works. But he comes from very humble beginnings. You know, um, he grew up in a village in India, um, you know, had to study under kerosene lamp had to go and live with his maths teacher to be able to go to school and complete his high school um, and, and struggle through a lot to get to where he is today. Um, and, you know, he has always acknowledged that the reason he was able to get to where he is is because of the generosity of his teachers and mentors. And, and now that he's in a position to help, um, he wanted to give back, um, not just to India, but to uh, students in the developing regions of the world. So, yes, he's the son of IPB professor. Have you? Yeah. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So, All right, interesting. He's the executive director of Immigration Agency in Jakarta. That's wonderful. I think now he's doing a PhD in Europe. In Poland, South, Warsaw. In Warsaw, right? In Poland, yeah. Um, so, um, so just he Abiyu came to ANU um, on the Chenupati and Vidya Jagdish endowment. So Professor Jagdish, using his own money, set up an endowment, a scholarship program um, that brings students from developing countries of the world to do research just in physics, particularly in physics. And Abiyu won that uh, endowment scholarship in 2019. And he had a, that's that's his quote. That's what he had to say about his time at ANU. So he spent three months there doing research in that. Um, and then that helped him get a scholarship in Poland um, and then he's doing a PhD. Um, so while Professor Jagadish was running his scholarship, we wanted to increase engagement with Indonesia and India, the other two countries. Um, and we thought, okay, let's let's take that idea of three months research project at the end of the year, um, and let's work with high quality institutions in those two countries and bring scholars from those two countries. So we run out of power. Sorry. Thank you. Um, so yes, and, and that's what the FRT program does. So we now work with high quality institutions in India and in Indonesia and support scholars from those institutions to come and spend three months at the ANU to do a research project. Um, and yeah, so Dr. Jagdish is the kind of you know maybe hero behind that. Um, so we launched the program in India first. That happened in at the end of 2018, and the first group of scholars were 
from India came to India in, in 2019. And that's 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 good. That's all of them, basically, without the assigns. That's the Indian ambassador in Canberra, and that's actually at his residence. So, um, and, and and they had a great time, right? Um, and that same year, we expanded the program to Indonesia. So we actually selected 20 Indonesian scholars who were meant to come to ANU in 2020, uh, but then COVID happened. So, unfortunately, they could not come, but some of them managed to complete their research to an extreme level. Those that were computational or theoretical in nature, they could do that in the um, in fact, this year we are running a very short virtual uh, program now, and in which four Indonesian scholars have participated. Um, they're mainly computational projects uh, and then theoretical. This one, four of those scholars are from ITB uh, so far. But I mean, we are super excited to return to an in breadth and FRT program because that's how the program is designed and it works best when a scholar is in the ANU at, on our campus and engaged and, you know, sort of into that research environment, a different research environment, a different, you know, cultural environment. Uh, and then there's, you learn a lot more and you gain a lot more by being there for three months. So just from the key facts, you may have already seen, you know, the, the um, information that has been put out by IPB uh, about the program, but basically, uh, Scholars are selected to come and undertake collaborative research projects at the ANU. Um, it is not a training program uh, as such. You are expected to come and do research and independent research and produce results um, as you know a PhD student would, uh, for example. For those of you who are not at PhD level, but that's that's the level that you'll be working with. You'll be working on challenging problems that the research you know lab leader who will be supervising you is also trying to solve. Um, so you, together we'll be addressing and then solving some of the research problems. They will, they will train you on how to use, if there's a piece of software or if there's some equipment, they'll, they'll train you on that, but then it's entirely up to you to run those experiments to come up with results and, and you know, to, to really learn the process of defining a research problem, to do analysis and to publish. Uh, um, to support, your travel to Australia and your time in Canberra, there is a $7,000 research uh, travel grant that is attached to each FRT scholar. So once you're selected, you get that travel grant and that should cover your airfare, your visa, your you know, uh, insurance and, and your accommodation and living costs when, when you're ready. Um, and this year we are working with 14 Indonesian universities, institutions and research organizations. So, and we hope to select about at least about 25 scholars from across those, those institutes. So um, we'll, we'll have a good group of scholars from across Indonesia at the end next year. And I hope that there are at least some IPB students uh, in that and hopefully some, some junior staff. Um, the range of research areas that are on offer is very diverse. Uh, there's over 110 research projects. They're all listed on our on our web page, um, but these are kind of the categories that fall under. Um, so, um, if, if you are, uh, I'm not sure which areas of um, science that you're from, but pretty much all the areas are represented. There are research projects from all the areas of science. But please visit our web page for more information on that. Um, that is really going into the technicality, so I will not spend too much time on it. Um, the, the, the key being the first round of selection actually happens at IPB. Um, so, and then IPB will be nominating candidates that have been shortlisted here. So, so that's how it will work. Um, you cannot apply directly to the ANU, you must apply and get through IPB selection process to be nominated. Okay. Um, the application are currently open. I believe IPB has called for an application and they have a closing date internally. Um, externally, the, the ANU application portal will close at the end of October, but IPB is plan to send and make selections before that. Um, so, and then you'll have some time to submit your ANU application once you have been selected by IPB. Um, we do hope that before this year, we will have a short list uh, of, of students. So the second round of selection will happen at ANU, and, and we'll have students shortlisted, selected, given everything that you need to apply for your visa, book your tickets, and everything. 
by the end of this year or at the latest early next year. And so you leave enough time before you come to the ANU, sometime in June, late June, once a semester here finishes, um, uh, there'll be enough time to get your visa. These are the RTA. Um, selection criteria, um, academic merit is, is the primary criteria. Um, and hopefully some of you have had some exposure to research. Maybe you've got a research project as part of your course or a research internship, all of that counts. So please put that in your CV, um, you know, in, in your resume. Um, and, and we'll, we'll of course look at IPB's ranking once, once they show to the student. Um, when, when we consider we get selected at the end. There is, uh, so it's not a requirement that, you know, a strict requirement around English language ability, but you do need to demonstrate that you, know, you are proficient in the language. Uh, you can do that through, through many ways. You can either provide an English language test if you have already taken one. If you have not taken one and do not want to take one, you can provide an example of a written work that you may have, you know, produced in English. Um, could be could be a report, could be a thesis, um, could be anything. Or you can just do a one minute recording of, of yourself talking about, you know, you, your research interests, your scientific interests, um, you know, that just showcases um, to the potential supervisor that, you know, you are, you are proficient in language, you can speak, you can engage with them. And you really, you can get the most out of your time at any Next slide, please. Um, some other key point, perhaps the, the most critical one is that you do not need to contact anyone at ANU. You do not need to contact supervisors. Uh, so please don't, don't go right into them, you know, whether they would accept you. All the projects that are listed on the web page, uh, the FIT web page, um, they have already been um, resourced. So um, supervisors for those projects are happy to have FIT scholars in them. Um, you will need to nominate at least one uh, research project or research group that you want to work with from those lists on the web page, but you can nominate up to three. Um, in, in naturally, you will find that the three that if you do nominate three, they will be closely related. So you know, um, if, if you're an astrophysics student, for example, then there will be projects offered by our astronomy and astrophysics school, um, but you can nominate them. And when you're in a year, it's not just that you know, all your 12 weeks will be in the research lab. Yes, you will spend a lot of time in the lab doing the research, but then there is a range of social cultural activities, yeah. professional development events and activities. Yeah. <laughs> Workshops around science communication, for example, which is critical. Um, you know, um, Workshops around grant writing, uh, which many of you, those that are interested in research in academia, that will come in handy. Um, eventually, of course, we'll, we'll take you to Sydney and to you know other places around Canberra as well. Um, you'll get to engage with the diplomatic community. Um, the Indonesian ambassador is very keen to host the group when they come. You'll get to engage with the Australian diplomatic community before you depart uh, Indonesia. So there'll be a calendar of those events. Next slide, please. Um, there is a, actually, I just have some feedback from the Indian students, some of them, two or three of them, who came to the ANU in 2019 as a party school. So um, there is a video on the USB, if you could play that, if you don't mind. So it's that video FRT student. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and I will probably leave you with that video because you know we can hear from students and hear about you know um, what they gained from spending time at the ANU. I believe a research project for a span of 12 weeks in one of the finest labs that 
If you could go back to the presentation, um, this. <coughs> Just the next slide, please. Yes. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me now, but um, you can always email frt.science at anu.edu.au. Um, yes, um, but happy to take your questions now. Um, if there are no questions and if you have some time, um, Park Dasi, did you want me to speak to any? at all about the postgraduate uh, opportunities. Yes, any questions for the students who wants to apply? Are uh, those students are also, it can be in the last semester, is it for undergraduate? Um, as long as they will not graduate before coming to the A. Ah, okay. <laughs> Yes. Before coming, yeah, because that will, there's a technicality around the visa as well on that because the visa that students come on it's a it's a visiting scholar visa it's a subclass four zero eight and the visa requires that whatever you do at the ANU um, if you're coming as a student you can come as a staff then you don't have to worry about what semester you're, in. you're not in the semester but if you're coming as a student so whatever you do at ANU as a visiting scholar should contribute um, and it should like be part of your studies here. Um, okay. And if you're not a student, if, by the time you enter Australia, if you're not a student, if you're graduated, it, it cannot contribute to anything, yes. you know, because you have already graduated. Okay. Um, so we just don't want that to be an issue. You know, um, typically, I mean, when, when you're entering, just in case, you will apply for the program much before graduating, right? You, you'll apply for your visa before you graduate, because you'll apply for it sometime in February. You haven't graduated by When you enter Australia, in case the immigration officer stops you and asks you, what are you here to do? And you're like, I'm a graduate of IPB. I'm here to do this program. They'll be like, no, your visa does not allow you to do this. You're like, okay. plane back home. Um, so that's a hypothetical scenario. We don't want that to happen. And that's, that's the technicality. So, but I'm not sure if you graduate by June or you actually graduate after September. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but when when do they meet the requirements of the degree? Yes, yes. 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 Absolutely, yes. They will gain the most out of a visit. You know, those that have a PhD degree already and are kind of mid career or senior PhD, um, you know, um, staff, um, they already have access to a lot of opportunities like this. You know, they, they, they can always go overseas and spend time with a collaborator. So, as your presentation mentioned, is the most uh, targeted for the, uh, for example, not uh, the student, yes, yeah, exactly clear. So, all our the students are uh, can be applied to their FRT. But uh, for the staff, uh, mostly for the master. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not targeted. So PhD, uh, perhaps the opportunity is very low. So the highest opportunity is for the master staff. Already got the master, 
uh, but not yet yet. That's the highest of all the dimensions by the bachelor last year's bachelor. Yes, yet finished. It is long, but uh, have to be a student. Yes, yeah. so that's the target. Yes, actually. Yes, I know. <laughs> For your I'm from. What is your name? Yes, I shall be an actual biologist. Okay. Still for your mobility, I'm a virtues from the Department of Biology. I want to ask you a question uh, whether I can do a research project which is not covered with my current study. Uh, for example, I want to take the medical issues for my research opportunity in the Thank you for that. Good question. So um, the, the question is, so, you know, he's asked specifically for his background, which, you know, the, the, the degree is in biology, but um, you would like to do a project in medical research or, or related area. Um, that can apply to others as well. You may be doing a degree in mathematics and you may want to do a project in computer sciences, or you may be doing a degree in chemistry and you may want to do a project in physics, you know. Um, yes, it is possible. That's the short answer. Um, you need to, as part of the application, you will need to write a response to why have you selected the research project you want to do and how will you contribute to it? So what skills and capabilities do you bring that will allow you to contribute to that research project and that will allow you to fulfill it? As an example, some of our medical research and biology research projects actually um, are very well suited to computer science students because they are highly computational in research. Um, so somebody that has experience writing software and coding can really contribute a lot to those projects. Um, so they can apply to do those projects. And, and that, that's a great learning opportunity for you actually, um, because you do get that exposure to interdisciplinary um, you know, research and work with a different set of you know, uh, researchers and a research environment. One question from the student. Uh, I'm the um, receive some questions from our Instagram account. If I yeah, yes, okay, that would be good. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dave. So, we have received a couple of questions since we uh, published this announcement. So, some uh, last year student asked the possibility if they apply this program. Um, and after they arrive in ANU, is it possible if they have the opportunity to do their final examination? In IDB University virtually, and then they have their graduation after that. But uh, is that possible because they will graduate after they arrive in Canada during the program? If it's not eligible, then we will answer that to our students who ask from the Instagram. But if it's possible, then that will be also the answer. Yeah, look, um, it, if they are, so yes, it is possible, you know, they can apply. Um, you know, and uh, they can be selected. Mm -hmm. The reason we, another reason, so, you know, as long as they're not a graduate, that's okay. The visa should not be an issue mm -hmm. for them then. Um, the other reason why we say it's those that are yet to start their final year of study are better suited mm -hmm. is because if you, if, if they're coming to us at the end of their first, mm -hmm. well, whichever degree they're doing, by that time, they've already decided what they want to do after. So if they're applying for a PhD position, if they're applying for a master's degree, or if they're going to industry, um, um, I'll come back to the industry part because that's that's another you know set of students that we prefer not to have. Um, but somebody who has just finished the third year, an undergraduate student, let's say, and is yet to start the fourth year, the FRT program will give them um, you know, some good research experience. Hopefully they'll do some great work. Maybe a publication will come out of it. Um, maybe you'll get some good recommendation letters from your ANU supervisors. And all of that will then play a role in what you do after you return to IPB. And you'll have one year to use your FRT experience to then try and secure scholarships for PhD, to try and secure, you know, um, you may be applying for a PhD position somewhere. So all of that. But if you're already coming to us, by the time you've graduated and you've already decided where you're going, um, 
for you, the FRT experience will still be valuable, but not as much as it could contribute to somebody who still has one year to go. Um, I mean, for those students, for example, they'll come back to IPB and they'll write their thesis here. Perhaps your ANU supervisor could be a co-supervisor on that thesis, yeah, you know? Um, so it's just those that come to us when they've already finished their program and they've decided where they're going and what they're doing, um, you can't really use all the sort of benefits that the FIT program may provide. That's um, very much clear. So our internal selection committee should have as a consideration. And also this program is open for some. And some of our um, lecturers asked what will be the definition of junior staff here. That's the degree positions or the um, period um, of being the lecturers might be part to fifteen years or what is the definition of junior? Um, good question. So it, it is very much, you know, when we say junior staff, it's basically those that are early career. So maybe two or three years of experience, um, you know, fresh into, into the academic system. Um, and um, we also recognize there are a lot of staff at Indonesian universities that are yet to get their PhD. Um, yes. So again, the program will help them when it comes to the, if they're applying for PhD programs anywhere in the world, um, you know, if they're applying for LPTP scholarship, for example, that recommendation letter and that FRT award certificate will play a role in those. Thank you. So I'll return to another student. Thank you. Are there any master degree students here? <laughs> okay, a, a, a lot of you. Um, I can perhaps leave you with, sorry, if I could go to the next slide, please. Um, that's just a list of our master degrees and bachelor degrees. If you're already master degree student, you don't have to worry about these. Um, but for those of you who are finishing undergraduate degrees, there are a lot of postgraduate programs at ANU that you can apply for. Um, and um, next slide, please. There are there are a range of scholarships that we offer. Um, the most, well, the biggest one is the Chancellor's International Scholarship. So um, that provides a substantial tuition fee waiver. Um, I should update this. This is last year's uh, scholarship. It was 80% tuition fee waiver, but only for the first year. We've changed that. Now the biggest tuition fee waiver you can get is 50% for your entire degree. So not just one year. So. Um, you know, that's what we've got here. Um, you do not need to apply for those scholarships. You're automatically assessed when you apply to study at the end. And next slide, please. Uh, for those of you who are graduating with master's degrees, of course, we offer PhD um, programs. Uh, the Doctor of Philosophy is, is your PhD, but there's also a Master of Philosophy. For those of you who are not yet convinced if you want to do a full PhD, but you are interested in research and you want to try out a, a shorter, research um, program, master's by research program. We can do that. Uh, and next slide, please. Um, entry requirements, um, you should have a substantial thesis uh, done in your master's degree or your bachelor's degree. Uh, for Indonesian student, that typically um, happens in your master's degree program that you will do a substantial you know, independent thesis um, at the level that we require for entry into PhD. And we have two scholarship rounds for international students. Um, there is an August round, which is the main round uh, that, that we run, um, but there's also a mid-year round in April that closes in it. Um, and again, when you apply for a PhD, um, you just tick a box that you want to be considered for any of your PhD scholarship, and then we automatically assess you for all scholarships that we have available. Um, so but just keep in mind that deadline, the 31st of August, that applies to most Indonesian students because by that time you have your results, you have your degree, um, you have everything that you need to apply for a PhD position. So, um, if you if, if you search ANU PhD um, scholarship or anything related to PhD, you'll get to the web pages that that will have all the information. So that's that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for 
is also the bill. How do you know about the specific topic research uh, that I follow your and and Yep. Um, so research topics for FIT program or for PhD? So they are on our website, actually. Um, if this is connected to the internet, uh, if you could just open up a browser, internet browser, and if you were to just Google ANU FRT Indonesia, possibly that will give you, again, if you just click on the first one, um, press from Sorry, I have to accept that. Um, if you scroll below, um, keep going. Keep going. So, and just here. So, for those of you perhaps are from biological sciences, just hit that drop down um, button. That will give you all the, all the projects that are. Uh, so, um, and you can. Yeah, you can scroll down. So there's there's many projects, uh, and then you could actually click on. They're all linked to the project web pages, which will have more information than just a brief. Again, so that that gives you an introduction to what that group does. Who is the lead supervisor? So you can kind of read about the person who will be supervising you, and you know what they what what is the work that they do. Uh, Please do that. Take the time to investigate a little bit about the project and the person supervising um, and, and, and incorporate your understanding of that in the response that you will provide why this, this research group or this project and, and how best will you contribute. Sorry, go back. <laughs> and it's the most number of projects that we are offering is actually in the physics and engineering. Yeah, yeah. So, but there is a Nobel Prize. Yes, uh, yes, and and we have so ANU has Australia's biggest physics school, uh, research school. Um, we are the biggest, you know, by a factor of two. Um, so the second largest is actually half the size of the ANU physics school. Uh, so uh, and a lot of very accomplished researchers. But please keep in mind. Well, I'm happy to take questions if you have any questions. But yeah, please don't forget to take a coffee before leaving. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, sir. Just I want to highlight uh, what this has mentioned about the um, um, research groups. You can take a look, take your time to study, but please do not contact the professor regarding to the MRT application. Okay, that's a very important news. Yeah. yeah, so we have already contacted all of those people. If they're listed here, it means they've agreed to take on FRT students. So, um, if they're not listed here, you cannot do an FRT project with them anyway, um, because we've checked with everyone at ANU if they want to be part of the FRT program. Those that said yes are the ones listed here. If they're not listed here, it means it's a moan from them. But they, they may be happy to take PhD candidates, PhD students, you know. Um, so if you're thinking of applying for a PhD program, then, then look at our research website, not just the FRT page. Yeah, we can see this one. Okay. 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 My point, my main question actually has been uh, asked to reverse participants about uh, should we take uh, the program which is linear with our background uh, program here at IDP University. But I have a second question. I wonder about this question uh, about the interview. I mean, 
uh, who will interfere? Is there an interview from AAU or only from other institutions? So, thank you. Good question. So, I I don't know what the selection process is at IPB. We let IPB decide that. So they are in full control of that. There may be an interview or may not be. At the ANU, the person who will actually be selecting the students at the end, uh, it will be the lead supervisor for that group. So let's say if you nominate this project, AJ Mitchell is the lead supervisor of that. Whoever from India and Indonesia nominates to work with me, AJ will actually collate all of their CVs and applications and send it over to AJ. Um, now, it's up to AJ to decide, does he want to interview his top three candidates or is he happy to just make a decision looking at your CV, your, you know, the response that you provide, about why AJ and why his projects and what do you bring to the project, um, your transcripts, of course, and, and then reading your academic reference letters uh, as well. In the past, I can tell you from previous experience, interview has happened in very rare cases at a &U. Um, Usually when there is a tiebreaker that needs to take place, uh, you know, that we, somebody, a uh, supervisor just cannot decide between two or three candidates. Um, then they may decide to schedule an interview with you, um, but they'll do it directly with you. But yeah, it, it, in the past, it's been rare. It, it doesn't happen often. And I think we will do interview for all um, complete um, documents candidates. Wonderful. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. And look, maybe, yeah, and, and that, I think a lot of institutions do that. And that is probably why the need at the ANU to do an interview doesn't really arise. <laughs> because the documentations that you provide are, are so <laughs> clear and, you know, you've been kind of vetted so, you know, well by, by the home institution um, that, a supervisor at end, you can then just make 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 a decision, you know, looking at all the documentary evidence that you can try. So the university will nominate the candidate to the and then and will decide to select the Yes, yeah, yeah. So that's it's basically a, a two step, two step, two stage selection process. First round happens at the home university. Second round happens at the end. So. Um, and again, we, we rely on the home university because two things, if you were to open it up to all the students at the 14 Indonesian universities, we'll receive thousands and thousands yes. of applications. And that would be just impossible for us to work through. Um, and two, we don't understand or know uh, you as well as your home university does. Um, you know, we basically look at your GPA, your transcripts, um, and in, in many cases, it's not necessary that the student with the highest GPA has the aptitude for research and the passion for research and is actually better suited to, to the research project. So um, whereas your institute, hopefully your department or your supervisors here know you much better than we ever can by just looking at your profile. So that's why we rely on them to do the first round of selection and then nominate candidates to us and we select. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Vinod Smarty. I'm a master degree student from the Department of Resources and Financial Economics. Uh, there's one domain client, and it could be uh, one of my reasons uh, to be here. Uh, I want to ask about the specific top topic that can be chosen by students to take uh, an active program. Uh, actually, uh, I have taken a look some specific research projects or area or books at the AMD websites, and because of my uh, study background is on the environmental and resources uh, field. So uh, the one which is most suitable for me is the uh, UNESCO Chair in Science Communication for the Public Good. And after I read uh, a little about it, uh, there is a statement that the, the case of study, which is will be a topic of research, will be chosen on the basis of the students and the supervisor's background and interest. Uh, and I want to ask, uh, so the specific topic and case study 
will be this mask can be chosen uh, by the supervisors and the students when uh, the students has arrived at the AMU or uh, if it's different with what I have uh, mentioned before, how is this pandemic mechanism to choose the topic if uh, we have been chosen as a Thank you. Thank you for the question. So um, that is one project where it is not exactly clear what research you know topic you'll be working on. There may be a few others where you basically just said a broad area, um, you know, of, of research, um, or have said that you know the supervisor will work with the student to find uh, a research problem or a research topic for you to work on. Um, you will be put in touch if you are a successful candidate. You will be put in touch with your and your supervisor much before you're meant to come to a you know you you have like four to five months um you know lead up time during which typically you'll find your supervisor if they have not decided a research topic they'll they'll organize a zoom call with you um you know to, to learn more about your interests and your background they'll tell you about some of the research problems they may be working on or what their what their thinking is but a project you could work on um, and then you can discuss that with them and, and arrive at, 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 a, at a you know mutually agreeable research topic. They may also give you some readings to do, um, you know, in the lead up to the program. They may also um, get you to um, do some learning or do some initial analysis on these data if it's a lot of your research project. Um, so really, I mean, you, you'll have some time with you know, to interact with the supervisor before you get to the, um, and, and that's very important because 12 weeks, trust me, three months sounds a lot, but it's very short when it comes to a scientific research project. Um, that is a key reason why we don't have more, um, you know, projects. I mean, we've got a good number, but ANU is, is very active in research and we have so many research groups, but they just say, I cannot accept the students for three months. It's just not enough. They would much rather have students for six months or nine months. To really, I mean, that's when you can contribute a lot more to the research work of the group, um, you know, and to the research group. Um, especially where there are experimental setups required. Um, you know, by the time you're getting results, it's time for you to go home. Uh, anyway, so um, three months is very short. So we try and maximize it. You start talking to supervisor early on. You do some prep work before you get to any. The moment you land there, you hit the ground running. You will start, you know, working and making the best use of. It. Any other questions? If there's nothing, please, I mean, feel free to write if anything comes to mind. You have the email address. Um, it's also on the FRT webpage. Um, so feel free to write to us or, you know, of course, ask IPV, the international office uh, here. They'll be happy to be able to answer most of your queries about the internal selection, selection process. Great. Uh, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you at ANU. So, uh, thank you very much again for your interesting and engaging topic of this day, and also thank you for the for the students together. Uh, before we close, we would like, other than the email that was mentioned for the presentation, and also you can find more about the program in the website that was shown before by J. Korea. You can also find the information in the high school Instagram. So if so if you see if you find IC on Instagram, all the information is mentioned here. Also the eligibility or who can apply for this program. And also the details is in the link here. Thank you for your attendance, for your presence here. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.